most videographers and filmmakers today shoot digitally. But have you ever noticed how a lot of them make their footage look like it was shot on film? In general, shooting on film takes way more time compared to shooting digitally because you need to plan so much ahead such as lighting, focal length, and on top of that, shooting film over time is really expensive. So with everything I just mentioned, what still makes this look so special? Well, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but in general, the film look is more inviting, authentic, it's more nostalgic, and I guess it's just more cinematic. It's something about it that makes you feel more connected and you feel more that you were actually there. This video is going to break down a plugin called Dehancer who reached out to me for a review. With that being said, this video is of 100% honesty and I would never promote anything I didn't agree with. Now, Dehancer offers several plugins specifically made for the film look. You can either buy them individually or you can buy their Dehancer Pro Pack for $3.99. Also, full transparency, I don't really have anything to compare this video with except for my own two eyes. I've done a tiny bit of film photography. I've never actually shot videos on film, but I have watched a lot of movies shot on film. I follow a lot of creators who mainly only shoot on film. And it's like a passion of mine I've had for many years trying to really emulate this film look. Now, there are several tools within this plugin that you can use, but I'm only gonna go over the ones that I personally use and the one that I think makes a significant difference. So when you first add the Dehancer plugin, your picture might turn out black like this. It took me some time to figure it out, but it's basically because the default has film profile enabled and if you haven't chosen a profile yet, it will look like this. I don't know why they made this the default because it's kind of confusing and a lot of times I don't even use a profile. So unless you're using a profile, every time you add this plugin, you need to disable this specific tool, which is kind of time consuming over time. But it's there and there are a lot of film profile options to choose from such as Cinestill, Fuji. If you feel stuck and need some sort of inspiration or guidance, then this can be a great place to start. Film compression is a tool that might not be that obvious to someone who hasn't like studied the film look or who knows what a film look represents. The compression tool helps manipulate the highlights and tonal range. Depending on how the footage was shot, you don't necessarily have to use this. And a lot of the same can be done outside of the dehancer. But I do think the film compression tool is better suited for the film look. First, I didn't think I was going to use color head because I assumed that what I could change with this tool was what I could change just like in the software. But the more I tried it out, the more I really started to like this. It's a setting that allows you to change the colors of your footage, but instead of just changing individual colors, you change the overall color of the entire picture. So it's very similar to offset on the color wheel. You can make the entire clip more yellow or more blue. And there's also options for the highlights and the shadows. Thinking back, I think that every clip where I've used the Dehancer plugin, I've used the color heads. I've only done small changes, but that goes a long way here. Next up, we have something everyone knows what is, and that is film grain. But the question is, how good is this film grain? For some time, I did what a lot of beginners tend to do, and that is to download a free grain overlay on YouTube or some tacky website. To be honest, I don't know if I will ever recommend doing that. I did it in the past, before, but all the videos I see of people adding grain to their videos, it just looks so cheap. It looks very cheap and tacky, and you can kind of clearly tell that this was not shot on film. 
When you download a film grain online, it looks cheap and tacky because you are downloading an overlay. An overlay meaning a file you just add on top of your already existing footage. The film grain does not communicate with the footage itself. It's just a grain added on top of it. I think they did a great job with the film grain. It's not too intense. A lot of the free ones, they're just too intense. It's too much grain. But this one, you can even change the settings of the grain. So you can change the size, the amount. You can even change it to look more digital versus analog or opposite. And just a little grain, again, goes a long way. Halation is something that I personally didn't know about until probably last year, but it's something that has like completely changed my mind. Halation is an effect that appears in overexposed areas that causes a red-orange halo. I think it's very unique and it stands out and it's something that you can't really just replicate in any other way. Again, the Hanser has different ways to adjust the halation. You can adjust the amount, the diffusion, the smoothness and a lot of other things. Probably my favorite part of this though is the mask option. So when you click on mask, you can actually see the areas. They're red and you so you just see the areas that have applied halation. It makes it much easier because you don't have to guess, you can actually see it right there. Bloom is also one of my favorite tools and it's very similar to halation, but instead of getting red and orange like highlights it's just white it's basically a glow around your subject or object i like to add gloom to probably all of my footage because it just gives it this soft look that's the thing about analog analog is much more softer it's the contrast is weaker the blacks are faded so i honestly just use the default there because it's great if you want a similar effect way faster, you can buy a ProMist filter and just shoot it, you know, in camera. Lastly, I do have to mention that adding any Dehancer plugin will significantly slow down your render time. I have not used this plugin for a big project yet, but I can already tell just by editing a one minute video. With that being said, my computer has never crashed or stopped because of this plugin, but I'm also editing and working from my iMac, which has 32 GB of RAM. So if you have, you know, only eight, then that might slow down your computer a lot. The Enhancer has upgraded the look of my videos, making them look more cinematic, especially with these tools that you can't really replicate, such as Halation and Bloom. And while I had never tried it, I do know that a lot of the same plugins and effects as the Hanser do come with the pro version of DaVinci Resolve for about a hundred bucks less. While the DaVinci Pro version isn't specifically made to emulate the film look, they do have plugins like Halation, Bloom, Grain. So it's something to think about if you want to make a decision. I will say that the Dehancer plugin is probably the fastest way to get like an overall film look that looks authentic. It's also worth mentioning that the DaVinci Studio version does not have a free trial, but the Dehancer plugin does have a trial for 30 days. So at least you can try it out to see if it's worth purchasing. And if you do decide to go with the Dehancer plugin, you can get 10% off with my code Maybach Films. If you have any questions, don't be shy. Please DM me on Instagram or comments in the section below. I'd love to talk with you guys, help you out, start a conversation. And yeah, as always, I hope you guys like this video. I hope it helped you guys with making a decision if you like the film look. And I'll talk with you guys next time. Peace.